Ever looked at a medieval painting and wondered why the baby looks like a 40-year-old accountant? Or why does the knight slaying a dragon feels oddly familiar in today's world? Buckle up because today we're time traveling through a thousand years of secrets, symbols and yes, even adult babies. I'm sure you will never look at art the same way again. Ready to unravel the mysteries? Hit the subscribe button and let's dive into the captivating world of medieval art. So before we start, let's talk about a period that starts around 500 AD and stretches to 1500 AD. That's a thousand years of art, people. Now picture this. At its height, the Roman Empire was a marvel of civilization. Imagine cities with advanced plumbing, amphitheaters like the Colosseum, hosting epic gladiator fights, and yes, beautiful art and sculptures that celebrated human form and achievements. But empires don't last forever, and Rome wasn't an exception. The Roman Empire started facing some serious problems. We are talking about invasions by tribes like the Visigoths and Vandals, economic struggles and a whole lot of internal corruption. It's like that moment when your beautiful painted canvas starts to crack and no amount of touch-ups can save it. Frustrating, huh? So what happens when a vacuum like that is created? Nature abhors a vacuum and so does society. As the Roman Empire crumbled, the church stood strong, acting like the frame that holds up a delicate piece of art. Initially, Christianity was just a small religious movement, almost like an underground art scene. But then something big happened. The Roman Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity and suddenly, Christianity became mainstream. The church now had power, money and influence, and they were about to use it in the most artistic way possible. They became the patrons of art, steering its direction for centuries to come. They were the art directors, critics and primary audience, all rolled into one. Let's talk about the big shot of the medieval art world, the church. Imagine you're an artist back in the day. You're not posting your work on Instagram, hoping for likes and followers. Nope. Your main client, guess who? The church is. Yup. And they've got some very specific tastes. Now, the church wasn't just a casual art lover. They were more like the ultimate art director with a divine mission. Remember, this time was a time when many people couldn't read or write. So the church used art as a visual language to tell biblical stories and convey Christian teachings. Think about it, stained glass windows were like the picture books of the era, telling stories in dazzling colors to those who couldn't read. Frescoes on church walls, they were like the movie screens, visually narrating epic stories of saints and miracles. But the church didn't just hand out art commissions willy-nilly, nope. They had guidelines, kind of like a divine style guide just like in the time of Noah, when he built the ark. These guidelines outline how key figures like Jesus, Mary, and the apostles should be depicted. And don't even think of going rogue with your artistic interpretations. The church could make or break artists. If your work was considered heretical or against the church teachings, you weren't just getting a bad review. You were risking excommunication or worse. But it wasn't all doom and gloom. Being an artist backed by the church had its specs. You'd have a steady income. Your art would be showcased in some of the most magnificent buildings of the time and you'll be contributing to a grand narrative that will last for centuries. Now let's get to one of the most talked about, meme-worthy and downright puzzling aspects of medieval art, those weirdly looking adult babies. Seriously, why do these infants look like they are ready to file taxes? First off, let's clear something up. These medieval artists weren't bad at their jobs. I almost thought they were, or maybe the medium they used was kinda difficult to control. But nope, that wasn't the case. They knew what babies looked like. But then again, if they knew, why did they paint them like mini adults? The answer, my dear friends, is symbolism. In medieval art, form often took a backseat to meaning. When it came to portraying infant Jesus or other holy babies like Moses, John the Baptist, St. Peter and others, the aim was to capture their divine nature, not their chubby cheeks. These grown-up babies symbolized wisdom, virtue and divinity. The idea was that figures like the infant Jesus were wise beyond their years. Literally, these weren't ordinary babies, these were divine beings in tiny human forms. Now you're probably wondering, was everyone cool with this? Well, remember our major patron, the church. They not only approved but endorsed this style. It was a way to convey complex theological ideas in a form that was easily digestible for the common folks. So while these adult babies might seem odd or even creepy to most of us today, back then they were the height of spiritual expression. They conveyed deep religious messages that resonated with the people of that era. So the next time you come across a medieval painting with a baby that looks like he's got a mortgage and a 401k, remember, you're looking at a piece of art that's not just a product of time but a symbol of belief that shaped an era. 
Medieval art had its own fashion seasons, if you will. Let's start with the Romanesque. Think of the Romanesque as a steady boot of the medieval art world. This style was all about thick walls, round arches and a sense of heaviness. Then came the Gothic era, the high heels of medieval art, elegant, towering and intricate. Gothic cathedrals had sky-high spires, massive windows filled with colorful stained glass and delicate sculptures that seemed to defy gravity. And let's remember the Byzantine, the bling-blings of medieval art originating from the East. Byzantine art was all about gold, mosaics and intricate details, it was opulent to say the least. Now these styles weren't just visually different, they were packed with hidden symbols. Let's play act detective for a moment. See that lion over there? It's not just any lion, it symbolizes courage and the resurrection. And that lamb, it's a symbol of innocence and purity, often representing Jesus himself. Now look at the ship sailing in the background of this painting. Ships were often used to symbolize the church itself, navigating the stormy seas of life. Every detail, no matter how small, was a piece of a giant spiritual puzzle. Now let's talk about architecture. Ever seen a building with soaring arches or intricate stonework and thought it looked kind of medieval? That's because many architects still draw inspiration from Romanesque and Gothic styles. But it's not just in our buildings, it's in our bodies. Yes, I'm talking about tattoos. You know those intricate patterns and symbols people get inked? Many of those designs have their roots in medieval iconography. And let's not forget street art, murals on city walls today often incorporate elements like symbolism and storytelling, which were key aspects of medieval art. Even in the digital realm, medieval art has its echoes. Think of the video game set. In fantastical worlds filled with knights, castles and mythical creatures, these game designers are tapping into the same rich tapestry of symbols and narratives that medieval artists used. Now why is this important? Because it shows that the language of art is universal and timeless, even though we live in a world that's so different from the Middle Ages. The core human emotions and stories that art captures haven't changed. So the next time you see a piece of modern art, whether it's a building, a tattoo or even a video game, take a moment to think about its medieval roots. You'll be surprised to see how the past and the present speak the same artistic language. So are you feeling like a medieval art detective right now? I know you are. Please go ahead and smash the like button, subscribe for more artistic journeys like this. Until next time, keep exploring, stay inspired and I'll see you in the next video.